All right, hey everyone, it's Professor Nagel. We're going to work through 6-1 and 6-2 from Murex C Sharp 8th edition. So this is Enhance the Future Value App and Experiment with Events. So 6-1 and 6-2. Uh, 6-2 just kind of picks up where 6-1 left off. And I started by opening the Future Value application. And then I need to use refactoring as shown as figure 6-5 to refactor the calculation in the event handler and create a new method called calculate future value. All right, so let's open our form. And I wanna to get to where the calculations are actually happening, which I know are behind the calculate button. So I can double click on that, and that takes me to the code. So the calculation is this bit right here. All right, and we wanna refactor this code and put it in its own method. So I'm gonna highlight this code, and then on the screwdriver here, I want to extract method from the quick actions. And we have to give this method a name, and we're gonna call this calculate future value. So now you can see that instead of the code being in this original event handling method, um, we are calling this method with the arguments and it was all written for us. So let's test this out. Save, compile and run it. So let's run it with a monthly investment of 100, interest rate of 12, one year. There you go. All right, so really we couldn't see a difference on the front end, but in the back end now we have this method. So if we ever need to calculate the future value again, we don't have to rewrite this code, we can just call on this method. Great, now hit Control Z twice to undo those changes. That was step four, by the way. And then step five is add a method named calculate future value that works like the one in figure 612. Um, start the new method, including the opening brace and the closing brace will be added automatically. And then move the related code into the new method. So between my BTN calculate click and BTN exit click. I'm going to create a new private. This is going to be a private method that returns a decimal. And we're going to call this calculate future value. And it takes as its parameter list decimal monthly investment, decimal monthly interest rate and an int months and then open curly bracket the close curly bracket is automatically given to us red squiggly if you look at this right now like we just wrote this code how is there an error well the error is that because this is declared as returning a decimal everything in here any way you go must return a decimal and we don't have any code in there yet. That's okay, we're gonna get there. So we're going to take this code here from decimal future value, including the for loop, and we're gonna move it into our new method. Make sure it's lined up nicely. And then we need to return future value. And now the red squiggly went away here, but we have a red squiggly up here because future value does not exist up here yet. So. I need to come back here and say decimal future value equals calculate future value. And it tells me what I'm looking for, what the arguments will be for this. So we have first the monthly investment and then the monthly interest rate and then the number of months. So this right here is declare the function or method and this is call the method. So let's save, run this, 112.1, great, it worked. What we just did there in steps five and six, writing this out and then dragging this code down and then putting up here, you know, creating our new variable and calling the method. That's what we just did before when we did refactoring. So you can see how refactoring can save you some time. Um, 
you know, just highlight the code, hit the little screwdriver, and extract method much quicker than what we just did there. All right, we are on to step eight, which brings us back to the form designer. Select the first text box, which is monthly investment. Then click on the events button in the properties window. So we have properties down here. If you don't have your properties window, view properties window. And we're looking for not the properties of this event or this text box, but the events that are possible. So these are all the things that could happen with this text box. Okay, the text box, um, someone could put their mouse button down. The mouse can enter the text box. The mouse can leave the text box. Um, somebody can press a, a key on the keyboard while they're in the text box. All this stuff can, can happen. And next to text changed, we want to clear future value. So this is the name my new method, and I'm going to hit enter. And now we have a new method, which was behind the scenes wired to the text change property of that box. And we actually have to do this thing to clear the future value. So txt future value dot text is equal to nothing. So what this is doing is when you run the application, and I put in 112, one, there's my, my answer, right? But as soon as I change this from, let's say, 100 to 200, it clears the future value because when I change this value, the answer is no longer correct, right? So when any of these change, we actually want to clear the future value. So, you know, someone doesn't come over here and let's say we change this future value and the old value is left here and then they go get a cup of coffee and they come back and they just go, okay, this must be the answer because that's what it shows when really this is the new answer. So when these values change, we want to clear the output as to not confuse the user. And that was step nine. Step 10, we can stop this, is to open the future value.designer.cs file. So I hit the little triangle in, form, in front of FRM future value. And we're looking at FRM future value designer CS and locate the statements that set the properties of the monthly investment text box. So at first you're like, hmm, I don't see it, right? Like this is all the code. And it looks like there's what, like, I don't know, 30 lines of code. But if you look at the line numbers, it says there's 171 lines of code. Where's everything else? Well, this code is collapsed. Windows form designer generated code. This is code that you generally don't have to touch. So it was automatic, automatically collapsed here. And there's like 100, you know, 20, 130 lines of code here. We can hit this triangle and open it up. And now we see everything. All right, and here is TXT monthly investment. And at the very end, you can see that when the text changes, call this method. And that's the method we just wrote. So in the designer, we did it this way. It wrote uh, that code wherever it went. It wrote this code for us. All right, one of the great things about using Visual Studio is we don't have to write all this code. We can just click and the code is created for us. Okay, let's get out of there. Go back to our form designer and we'll do step 11. So select the yearly interest rate tax box. Remember right now when you run this and you change the monthly investment, future value is cleared. But if you change the year or number of years, future value does not change. So we wanna change that, okay? So we have yearly interest rate is selected. If we look at the events, tax changed. Now instead, we don't have to write a whole new method for this, we already have a method. And the method that we want to call is clear future value. And we're going to do that also with number of years. Find text changed, clear future value. So now we run our application, 112.1. All right, what if instead of 12, we get, and as soon as I change that, future value goes away. So it doesn't show me a wrong answer here. And you can play with that as necessary. But whenever you change any of these values, future value gets wiped out. That was six dash one. So students not in my class, if your instructor has you submitting six one, this is where you would stop, save everything, zip it and submit it. My students, you have one assignment, which is six one and six two. So we're going to continue on with six two experiment with events. 
So in the form designer, we're still back in the form designer. This is step two, by the way. Step one was open this, which we already did. Um, double click the form designer to create an event for when the form loads. So you need to click on some, what we call white space. I know it's gray, but it's empty space. And now we have a new method that runs when the form is loaded. And you might've done this by mistake while you've been working in your designer, right? And you're like, oh, I didn't want to do that. I'm going to take this and, and it, like, let me just show you real quick. If we run this, great, it ran. All right, and this method ran, you didn't see it happen to run. Um, I'm just gonna do like a message box dot show, hello world, <clears throat> to show you that when the application runs, hello world, right, the form is loaded, I get this little message box, and there's my form. All right, so that was proof that this thing's actually running, but oops, we made a mistake, I don't want that, so we're gonna delete it. And now, when we run the application, if you haven't gotten this yet, you need to pay attention to this error message. There were build errors. Yep, I know that. We purposely caused an error. Would you like to continue and run the last successful build? The last successful build was the one I did just before this. I never want to do that. Okay, running the last successful build is not going to help you at all. It's only going to show you the last time your code worked. So we're going to say no, and we're going to look at our error list, and we're going to fix this error. FRM future value load does not exist, right? Because yeah, it doesn't exist, we deleted it. So where is it being referenced or where is it being called is in the future value designer.cs line 156. Now I could go into the future value designer and scroll to line 156, or I could just double click on this and it takes me right there. So I'm gonna take this line, select it, delete it. Now when I hit F5, my application ran successfully. That was step three. Step four, come back to our designer here for step four. Select the form. So the form is selected. You can see the handlebars around it. The form is selected. And in the events, on double click, uh, we want a new event handler. So I'm going to just double click in this space here, which gave me a new event handler and it named it automatically. It's the event, which is double click, and the object, which is FRM future value, and this is a method, so it puts an underscore in there. This is just the name of the method, all right? Doesn't, there's not a naming convention to use. It doesn't have to be this. Um, this is no, not secret code that says when the user double clicks on FRM future value. Remember, that secret code was put in here. Right here. When you double click, run this method. When someone double clicks on the form, we want to clear all of the text boxes. So if you recall, our text boxes are, we have TXT monthly investment, TXT interest rate, and TXT years. So I'm going to say TXT monthly investment dot text equals nothing. TXT interest rate dot text is equal to nothing. TXT years dot text is equal to to nothing. Now here's an interesting question. Do we have to clear future value? Do I have to put that down here, right? Am I going to do txt future value.txt is equal to nothing? Do I have to do that? The answer is no, because as soon as txt monthly investment.txt is set to nothing, that changed. Which remember, when txt monthly investment.txt changes, we run clear future value, which does this. So actually TXT future value gets cleared one, two, three times when we double click the form. We do not need to do it a fourth time. And let's test to make sure that this works. This is step four. So 112, one, if I double click on the form, it wiped these out because each of these were wiped out. Any of these were changed, future value gets changed. That was step four. Step five, we're just playing with different events on the monthly investment box we want a mouse hover event. So go to over here, find mouse hover, and we want to run clear future value. I don't know why, I think probably just to show you that we can do this. Again, test, every time we're gonna make a change, we're gonna test 112, one. All right, so I have my mouse. I'm going to hover, so I'm gonna come onto the monthly investment 
box, and I'm going to leave it there for a second. And there you go. Future value was wiped out. That was mouse hover. And then on the yearly interest rate box, for double clicking, double click on yearly interest rate, we want a new um, event handler, new method that handles this. So double click, and we're going to set this value to 12. So txt monthly investment dot text is equal to 12. So it's equal to the string 12, not the number 12, because the number 12, this is an integer, and the integer has to be changed to a string in order to go into the text property of this box. We could probably do, you could do that, right? But that's kind of, that's goofy code. Let's just do the string 12. Oh, and I set the wrong one. Not monthly investment, txt interest rate dot text is 12. Let's set the right one. Okay, so now when I double click on yearly interest rate, I double clicked in that box, it set the value to 12. Um, I'll make this like 10 2 and hit calculate. Now watch, I'm going to double click on yearly interest rate. It'll change this to 12. And because this changed, future value gets wiped out. Oops, I hovered over monthly investment. Let me do that one more time. There you go. So events can cascade. One event can cause another event to, to happen. That was step six. Step seven, for my class, I'm not grading on. If you're not in my class, you may be graded on this. Um, use your imagination to work with other events. So you might have to add different things like um, what happens if someone double clicks on the exit button? I have no idea, right? Or what happens if they hover over a number of years? Something could happen. Um, you can look at all these different events, right? And maybe play with a, a couple of them and figure out what's what. All right, that was 6.2 save everything, zip it up. My class, you're submit, this is 6, 1, and 2 together. So you're only submitting one file for that assignment. It's only one assignment in Brightspace. All right, don't look for two of them.